Hi, this is Farrell Dalrymple, and this is the next set of daily drawings. This is drawings 161 through 180. And the first one up we have is an O'Connell line van with a diamond shaped window and birds airbrushed on the side. That was the request anyway on, um, on my Patreon. I asked for requests of drawings and you know, the people on the Patreon that make the request can have the first dibs at buying it if they like it, <laughs> like the results. Um, and usually they, they will buy them. I've only had a couple times where they didn't. Um, but this is, uh, they're all $20 too, um, which is pretty cheap considering how long they take me, <laughs> especially. But this one I decided to <clears throat> ink it with a brush and just because I'm doing it in watercolor and not actual airbrush, I decided to keep the drawing on the van, the side of the van, just in pencils to give it kind of a softer look. And then watercolor it on top. I didn't do any background or anything. And uh, it came out, I was pretty happy with the way this one came out. Um, I didn't really know what to expect going into it. Most of these drawings have been characters rather than uh, objects like cars and things like that, but there's been a few different ones. This one, next one up was a specific request of a, an actor playing a character, uh, Lo Lee from Shaw Brothers movie, a Hong Kong, uh, Kung Fu movie called Clan of the White Lotus, which I don't know if I've seen this one. I've seen a, a bunch of Shaw Brothers movies, but a lot of them kind of blend together for me. <laughs> I think I watched them all at a certain time in my life, but, um, the uh, Boxer's Omen is probably my favorite just because how weird it is. But uh, I, got, I should rewatch this one. I, I just doing this daily drawings. I didn't really have time to watch the movie, but I just uh, I looked at a bunch of pictures of it and uh, a trailer of the movie where he's just jumping. And I thought that was kind of a cool, cool pose. So I sort of modeled his pose off that. And I did a portrait of the actor uh, playing him, um, Lowly playing the Chief White Lotus, I think is the character's name. I think he also directed the movie as well. I, I'm, I put a link in the uh, description of this video if you want to like look at the Wikipedia um, of you know him. Uh, I do that sometimes for the portraits that I've done, and this is that was actually the second to last portrait I think that I. I have, uh, there's one more, Mike Patton, we'll see a little later. Uh, um, this next one up was a request for a, uh, uh, let's see if I can remember this. It, it was a gardener or plant lady, I think was the thing. So it might've went off model a little bit or off the description a little bit, but it was like a, a cyborg uh, plant lady. So I just kind of made this sort of half robot, half person uh, gardener we did some kind of weird plants in the background and inked this one with a brush as well I think the low I might have done with the you can rewatch the video if you want but uh, I think I might have used a fabric castile pit pen and this one was done as you can tell from this video with a brush a Raphael 8404 and I should include that in the description as well um, yeah, and there's a watercolor, mostly watercolor. I use a little bit of uh, gouache on some of these too. And this one here is one of the rare ones where, one of the only ones in this grouping that I used a marker. You can kind of see on the left there, there's a couple of little markers and stuff. Um, yeah, just for like some of the chords and lights and things. I might have even used like a colored pencil or something too, just to punch it up here and there. This one and the next six were all for a, um, a show at Nucleus Gallery in Nucleus Portland. I think the original Nucleus is in LA and there's one, a gallery here uh, as well. And they've been doing this, I think for the last five years, these coaster art show where uh, they invite different artists to do, uh, I think up to six coasters and I just, uh, the other time I did it, I did six as well. It was like a couple years back. And um, yeah, this year it seemed to fit the format of doing these daily drawings really well. So I decided like 
oh, okay, cool, I'll do them for the show. So I, I actually did them in advance. I, I worked ahead of, the time, ahead of time so I could time the release of these for when the show came out. <clears throat> and the first one, and they're all, all the, all the six coasters I did were for a series that I want to do for Image Comics called Robot Todd. And this is the first coaster here is the main character, Robot Todd, who's been in a bunch of my other books, It Wall Hurt. And I think that's where he made his, his debut, but I've had him in different stories in the back, like he's in the background a lot in Proxima Centauri. And this next character is uh, Sept, and uh, I've, I've changed uh, their name a couple of times, but uh, yeah, it was, uh, I, I did a one-pager with this character with Rick Remender for the Thought Bubble anthology, and I, I printed it later in my last book, The Often Wrong, and I'll put descriptions and I'll put links to all these books too and in the description of this video and uh yeah I don't want to even though the series is way far out for me to actually <laughs> like I've done about four pages on it but I I just been working on paint gigs for the last couple of years so I haven't really had a chance to uh kind of dive into it as much as I'd like to but this seemed like a fun opportunity to to do some uh, promotional images for it it kind of get me you know more ex I mean I'm really excited to work on it I just uh, it seemed like a good crossover to do these daily drawings and have this be in the show and yeah so uh, yeah I don't want to kind of reveal too much about this character but these um, I like working on these coasters I don't know whatever type of paper it is but it's nicer paper than the watercolor paper that I used for these daily drawings. And um, you can, uh, I think all of them sold except for one. Um, you'll see, I'll, I'll point it out and I put a link in the description if you still want to, if you want to have a chance to get it, it's still available for sale at, on the Nucleus Galleries website. Um, but this one isn't, this one's sold and this is... Uh, a character which I still haven't. This I just been calling her Mouse Girl because <laughs> I don't. I haven't uh, settled on a name for her yet, and uh, really a design too. I've, I've kind of changed her design up a little bit here and there. Like originally had her wearing a hat, like a stocking cap, but it it felt really awkward kind of putting it on her her mouse head. So. Uh, yeah, and there's the finish there, but I I really like the way these come out the on these coasters. It's like the the mute kind of mute the colors a little bit in a cool way. Working on this, the paper really makes a big difference. With it seems I for me anyway, I've noticed that working on different kinds of paper it will change the look of the color of the watercolor a lot. And I don't know if that's just like a technique thing or if it actually is. You know, it kind of depends on what type of paper you're using, but. Um, I need to I need to uh, change up the paper I'm using because um, yeah this, I've been kind of getting these sort of student grade stuff that's cheaper and uh, I, I notice it's more of a, a a time suck working on that paper than something like this where it's like it's very uh, smooth and satisfying laying down colors with this this stuff a little harder to to ink but it, I feel like the result, the color results are a lot better with these. Um, it's almost like an illustration board or something, this, co this coaster material. I should ask the gallery what, how they get these made because it'd be kind of fun to just uh, work on these from now on. But um, yeah, and so this is the one that is available for sale, uh, this, this particular drawing. And this is the sort of the, the, the doll character that talks to Sept and only he, it's kind of like a Calvin and Hobbes thing kind of where he can, only he sees her, Robot Todd can see her too, but doesn't really interact with her. But uh, basically it's like, like I said, I don't want to spoilerize it too much, but um, like the thing is in, you know, in the, in the comic and the story I have, well, I, I, I just want to say, it's just the companion to Sept. Like, let's just, <laughs> let's just leave it at that. Um, this last one here, the coasters is, uh, the, you know, bad guy, I guess the bad, the, the antagonist of the story, 
of Robot Todd, and I had uh, I based this drawing off of it, a drawing I did that's in my book Delusional, which is like a art collection book, and I I modeled them after a a Mobius drawing, so it's very got kind of a very big Mobius vibe, and um, yeah, the and then I I modeled this drawing after after the that drawing that I did in Delusional. And I have him written into the story. It's like it's kind of like a Wizard of Oz thing, where it's like him and another, like a, a sorcerer or wizard lady, who appears at the beginning of the story, and their brother and sister. And uh, she gets killed like right away. You know, sort of like the house falling on the Wicked Witch of the West or the East. I don't remember which one dies in the beginning, but um, yeah. So this next one here is. Um, I think I'm calling him Wilder, and it's sort of like a mashup of Gene Wilder's name, because <laughs> uh, there's that movie, The Little Prince, the '70s one, not the the CGI one. I, I haven't seen the more recent one, cartoon one, but I love the live action musical that they made in the '70s, and Gene Wilder plays the fox, where they it kind of switches between. There's like a real fox running around, and then it kind of just switches back and forth into Gene Wilder in this like brown. Brown, red brown suit which is like i don't know really cool and, and i like i love the music too the songs that the song that he sings in that and uh i do i did a little like more in-depth description on uh my patreon on the last patreon post i made about the uh bob fossey dance moves and he bob fossey plays a snake too it's like um it's got a kind of a cool sequence but my favorite scene in the movie or the whole section of the movie is the part with Gene Wilder because I was a big fan of him as a kid you know Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory and all that but um but yeah this is a this is one of the one of the group there the good guys in the book one of Robot Todd's companions uh, along their you know quest that they have um in the story and he can like astral project himself like has like a spirit he's like his own spirit animal kind of thing <laughs> um so this uh next one was a, a request back to the request from the patreon subscribers um and it was i think the request it just said king of squirrels and i actually looked uh the looked up king of squirrels and um there's a couple things that I found, like one was, I guess there's a such thing as a squirrel king, which is kind of like a rat king, you know, where like all the squirrels get their tails tied together, but I, I don't know if that's like a real thing or if that's actually just made up for the internet, um, but there actually was like a YouTube video person who's, uh, I guess kind of popular, but called King of Squirrels, but I, I just sort of made up my own anthropomorphic fantasy dude who's bigger than a normal squirrel and gave him that little acorn scepter and stuff um i kind of see him being like an it wall herd or something like that so this next one got robot todd here again and this was a request from a patreon subscriber who asked for a cyborg lion and uh robot todd riding it and um so this one i don't have a time lapse for the color because i uh I did the pencil drawing looking at a picture and so when I was coloring it I I like I wanted to look at the picture to get the colors right and um yeah so this next one here uh you can see here's like some poses I did for the reference for this guy but I had a uh this is Mike Patton from Faith No More and Mr. Bungle and you know various other things he's um I know there's like a lot of fans of Mike Patton or super and Faith and More that are like super fans. <laughs> um, I like the music, but I don't. I don't really. I'm not. I haven't followed his stuff too much over the years. But um, yeah, I just included a couple reference pictures that I took because I just basically had him like from his chest up. The, the photo reference that was sent to me. So I just kind of did the pose, and I think it worked out pretty well as far as like the way the pose came out and everything. I should really do that more, but I get lazy a lot of times and don't feel like getting up from my desk to take pictures. Um, so this next one here, uh, next two actually are uh, toys that my friend Jason Lex made. Who uh, Jason Lex is a cartoonist and um, 
podcaster and all sorts of cool things, designer, um, and one of the funniest people I, I know. He's a great dude and lives in Pittsburgh, and he's been putting out these sort of like muscle men type toys that he's been making himself, like doing the mold and designing them and everything. And he asked me, he sent me the, the toys, and they're really cool, uh, and asked me to do drawings of them, of the two first two characters he has. So uh, this first guy, I don't, uh, I think the names are on the package, I don't know if you can see, but I, I forget his names, but it's like this kind of lobster guy versus this other guy with clamps. And um, yeah, and Crab Nebula versus the Motor Cyborg. So I guess this, this guy is the Motor Cyborg. And, um, yeah, I decided just to do them in black and white because I think he does them all in different colors and it just, I don't know, it just seemed like the way to go, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'll put a link to in the description. If you want to order one of these, he sells them and she will ship them to you. And, uh, I think he sterilizes everything too. So, he, you know, just to be safe and all that stuff. And, uh, yeah, so this next one up is, uh, okay, this is, I think, the last portrait I did, <laughs> I'm doing, um, hopefully, the, I think this is the last one, um, this is, uh, Harry Houdini, the, uh, Hungarian, American, famous illusionist, escape artist guy, it seemed like there was a lot of stuff about him growing up, like, uh, just on TV and stuff, I just, uh, it was kind of a fascinating dude to me, and, uh, died of, uh, uh, parentinitis, whatever, from, I think, that they were think is kind of related to appendicitis from him getting hit in the, like, he might have had appendicitis, uh, but he got, basically got punched in the stomach a bunch by some jerk, <laughs> like, backstage, and, like, uh, kind of ended up killing him, uh, they think, anyway. So this, uh, next one up is a, uh, sort of a Silver Surfer spoof. Someone, um, that's gotten, a Patreon subscriber that's gotten a few of these drawings from me already asked me to, uh, do, like, a different version of the Silver Surfer called the Bronze Surfer, and he wanted him riding a ham hoagie. <laughs> and uh, it's fun drawing the guy, that, the ham hoagie part. I don't know if you can tell. I was a little more, a little lackluster about drawing, you know, drawing the sandwich. I, I probably, I mean, I spent already like too long doing this, like doing the stars and all that. And I just was like, okay, I'm, I'm done with this. But um, looking at that now, I'm like, oh man, I should have made, add a little more red to those tomatoes on there or something. But um, yeah, so this next one up is. Um, another tarot card, which I'm, I'm glad I'm doing more of these. I, uh, you know, pretty soon, once I get through the, the last of the regular requests, I'm going to just swing into just doing all tarot cards. And this one is justice. And, um, yeah, I'd ink this, I'm inking all the tarot ones with a brush. I'm making a point to not switch back and forth with the, the pen on these. I'll just, uh, I'll stick to using the, uh, Raphael 8404, number four for these and yeah this first one uh i i just basically went off of the tarot card i kind of stuck close to the tarot card the first couple i did i think i, I added more of my own sci-fi fantasy take on it but this one i uh i just kind of liked the imagery from the the uh, traditional tarot so i i kind of modeled it off that a bit more than i have some of the other ones um, but yeah, here's a sort of, a um, you can see the, the process a little bit, even though I don't have a, a time lapse of the colors. Cause I was, I think I was looking at the, the colors on the, at the tarot, the, the traditional tarot. So, uh, yeah. And so this next one at Sinclair, who I've probably drawn the most of these daily drawings, I think I've drawn him the most and probably like my most, like if I have like, uh, I guess an epitomal or iconic character, he's probably it. I just, um, like my old, my earliest character, you know, my, from my book Pop Gun War, from my series Pop Gun War, I've, uh, he seems to be the most, like, I guess, I don't know, popular is the right word, but I've, I've drawn him the most over the years. And um, 
<clears throat> someone asked me to put him in a uh, angel from the X-Men costume. And I figured that was safe not to get like sued or cease and desisted or anything by Disney. Just putting him in a costume, you know, it's like he's cosplaying as that guy rather than actually uh, a version of that character. And so this uh, next one is another tarot, The Fool. And I would say this is even more closely resembling the original or traditional tarot than the Justice one even, except that I kind of gave uh, the character more feminine qualities even than the, the uh, traditional tarot. And this is the last one here. It's a, um, I got a request to do a cow on roller skates. And at first I was drawing just a regular cow wearing roller skates, but I, I looked on the internet and there were so many pictures of that. I just like, I think of like roller skating and think like, oh, roller disco 70s. So I thought it'd be fun to put uh, like a roller disco girl with like a cow head, like an anthropomorphic character. And so that's it for this time. Thanks for watching. Check out the Instagram and uh, take it easy.